How the hell did this happen? I have been warning you since before the fall of Europa that Steel is the most dangerous commander the Tevs have. He is not going to dick around conserving resources and fighting an inexorable attritive war like Severanti. He wants this war over. He hates the waste of life almost as much as he loves the chance to fight. I told you he'd go for the throne. Now we're looking at logistical collapse within the year, unless we cut our fleet in half. If that doesn't happen on its own. On top of that, Byrne continues to insist on diverting critical supplies to his damn priority operation. You should have given me your ships when I needed them, Byrne. Not squandered the whole fleet defending the Elder's mysterious project. If we do not break out of our defensive rut, within three months, we are all going to answer for it at the gallows. Insec has recently become aware that a document was posted publicly on FleetNet labeled as a compartmentalized admiralty communique. Although the source claims to be the scrumpled Jovian comms officer, I am sure none of you are naive enough to believe this obvious fabrication. GTVI continues its psyops in an effort to wear down our morale and cohesion. If you hear scuttlebutt about this message, defeat it as you would any other enemy. This is Paula Hunter, Alliance Embedded News, reporting in the field on board Artemis Station in the Sol System. Several days ago, GTBA forces launched a truly enormous coordinated attack against UEF naval infrastructure in the space around Earth itself. This is a huge, a really huge. Am I getting through, Chen? All right, sorry, yes. This is an enormous change in the strategy from what we saw under Admiral Severanti. In an interview yesterday, Admiral Steele told us that he wants the war over by the end of the year and he's willing to take risks to do it. I want one thing to be clear. We will suffer losses. I'm not going to grind away 500,000 lives on both sides when we could spend a few thousand now and achieve victory. We need to show the UEF the rules of the game. There are no rules. These people are fragile. They haven't seen what we've seen or fought our battles. Push them, and they will break. Now, a lot of pundits have criticized this change in strategy as an unnecessary risk. And I know there's been a lot of footage of damaged ships coming home or news about lost squadrons. But let me tell you, the damage inflicted by Steel's attacks is just so much more punishing. Captain Telfer eventually found him in his bunk, up to his ears in rocket fuel. He got an immediate court-martial, and was determined psychologically unfit to continue in the Navy. He leaves for Earth tomorrow, and they're setting him up in a government center for some spiritual therapy. It's sad that the Navajas are being broken up, but to lose Kasim as well makes it all that much more difficult. He had the manners of a hog in heat, and half the charm. But he was a good pilot, a reliable friend. Like Captain Telfer said, though, this is war. War doesn't stop for anyone. It is a machine that carries on without us, and we either continue on with it, or we die. Let me tell you something that I always told your parents. No matter what life throws at us, we always have a choice in how we receive it. Most of us aren't born great. It's a conscious decision that we make at some point in our lives that propels us to do great things. You're still at the beginning of your adult life, but the choices you've made in this war have shown me that you are quite capable of determining your own destiny. It is therefore with no fear that I let you go into the unknown by yourself without me to guide you. 
I'm going to Elisa Station to help out with the training of new pilots. I've been flying Navy birds for more than 20 years, and this is probably the most useful thing I can do in this world. My reactions aren't what they were 15, 20 years ago, and the front is no place for a person. Who would have thought of it? But I'll let three of us. You'd be the only one of us moving forward. Not bad. I'll send you a message when you get a spin. With love. Morning, Fighting Navas. This will be a last sortie before everyone goes to their new postings, so let's make this a good one, right? Here's the situation. About 15 minutes ago, we received an automated distress call from one of our cruisers, the Dea Ikornis. She was transferring some non-essential materials from Mars to Earth and serving as a base and rally point for local patrols. We can't establish communications with the cruiser, so we've assumed that she must have fallen under some distress. Admiral Byrne has ordered us to send a wing to investigate the fate of the Ikornis. This is not a recon mission. We suspect enemy action to be the cause of the cruiser's distress. GTVA forces have withdrawn from regional space after the Second Fleet's maneuvers, but we've detected some remnants that haven't joined up with the Tev Fleet at Europa. This could be a retaliatory action. We need you to proceed with caution and be ready for a fight as soon as you enter the area. Beta Wing will serve as backup. Because of Bree's departure, you'll be taking Alpha Wing report. Your recent action at Risa Station has proven that you've got the capability for field leadership. I've already made a statement in your Fleetnet record for your next squadron leader. Do us proud, Sub-Lieutenant. Hey, hey, Laporte. It's Benito. Cameroon, checking something on the deck. Hey, when we get back, let's take a few minutes to remember the Navajo, so, all right? Get the double for you. Congratulations on your promotion, too. You deserve it. You're handling all the spending for most of us. Dia Iconis in sight. She's adrift and under fire from Tev skirmishers. Finn, Cameron, let's get in there. Only five of them. We can do this. We've handled worse. Zero, we've got a problem. Three Ulans, two eight zero high. They've painted us and got Buster. So much for picking clean, huh? Why not leave without less of insane time? Roger that. Rub it, dishes, knock it up. Shackle for me, fans out for ACM attack. Press, that's Greece needs to put to and all the friends. Can we take these guys? I can. Thank you. Alpha 1, Fox 2. We're good, and we were better. Dear Iconis, this is Alpha One of the Fighting Navajas, UED Solaris. We've destroyed the Tev skirmishers. What's your status? Good to see you, pilot. We were jumped by GTVA fighters due to navigational adjustments. They targeted both our weapons and engines. We're guessing they were planning on bringing in Marines and us. Are you carrying anything important, Iconis? Information and space oscillators, maybe? The freighter Nauticus was hit by Geffs recently in a similar situation. Nothing like that. Marines, some prisoners who surrendered during the Earth Sector Blitz, a transfer crew, 
water and ammunition. Well, they must have a transport nearby waiting for their fighters to finish off your weapons. We need to get reinforcements here pronto. Let me signal the Solaris. Solaris, this is Laporte. The Dia Iconis is secured. She's been disabled and we suspect the Tebs have a marine team nearby standing by to board. Requesting reinforcements and a repair crew. Roger that, Laporte. We're firing up a fast response team and the rest of the Navajos. On station in two minutes. Captain Cole here. I don't like this pilot. There's something off about this operation. Too few fighters for a Tev strike. Yeah, I'm getting the same feeling. The fighters attacking you weren't using normal Tev tactical comms. As if they wanted to stay off their own net. Transport you're expecting, pilot. Watch the escort. Fire team Alpha, scramble to the ventral airlock and deploy claymores. This is Commander Kai Shovel. We do not intend to engage your ships. Stand down and allow us to board peacefully. No one has to die here. That's a negative. This is a combat zone and ROE holds. I cannot allow your ships near my charge. You've got a choice here, pilot. You can stand aside and save a lot of lives including your own, or you can make things difficult. Think hard about your decision. No. If you have a diplomatic request, then go through diplomatic channels, but you don't get to make demands at gunpoint. And I cannot permit an unknown hostile with a dubious story to board this ship. All right, so be it. If you're the one who killed Zinni and Zero, and I'm not going to have any regrets. Escort on the Dia Iconis. I'm gonna head back to the Solaris. Clear my head. Get some rest. Sure, Lamort. What, getting tired of killing Tevs? We heard you're a real butcher out of Reza. I'm fine, just dangerously close to thinking about what I just did. Laporte, Venito, Cameron, welcome back to the Solaris. We don't have a briefing room anymore, so we're going to do this over coffee. Cream, Sub-Lieutenant? I'm glad you all came home intact. The Tevs you ran into today were genuine badasses. Some of them former SOC. Okay. 
I have no more idea than you do why the Tevs were so eager to board the Dea Econis. Their strike was undersupported and desperate. The ships you engaged were from the 41st Bengals off the GTD Imperius. They should have been in Delta Serpentis with their base ship. Our best theory at the moment concerns one of the prisoners the Dea Econis was transporting. Captain Esmar Alfadil of the 41st Bengals surrendered himself to UEF custody during a failed attack on the Jakarta Station dockyards. So far as we can tell, members of his squadron went rogue in order to rescue him from what they perceived as a fate worse than death. It's hard for me to think about, I'll admit. Ubuntu taught us all never to treat a human being as a thing, but if we're going to go out there and kill them, we can't know things like this. Things like how much these pilots loved their commander. I know I couldn't pull the trigger if I had to think about it. Uh, never mind. Laporte, you look shaky as hell. You should get some rack time.